afternoon, friends. It's a beautiful afternoon. I would also like to introduce a very talented, dynamic, and I would also like to introduce a very dynamic, talented, and versatile talent of our film industry, who is also known as Powerful Performance House, Tapsi Pannu. We all very well know Tapsi is known for her strong and fiercely performance for her movies like Mil, uh, Mul, Pink, and uh, Thappad, Mission Mangal, and the very recent Shabash Mittu and The Bara. She has done her debut in Telugu films, also in Tamil from 2010 onwards. And from there, Tapsi has won acclaim and many awards not only for her talent in acting, but also the kind of the role that she chose and the subject that she chose for her films. Women empowerment and fighting injustice and patriarchy was one of the common social elements in all her films. So Tapsi, it's an honor and it's a privilege to have you with us. Lady of many facets, Tapsi Pandey. I would also like to welcome our author, Minnie Wade, who is a TV and print journalist, who is also a document filmmaker and has authored four non-fiction books. Fateh, being from the same genre, is a bit fiction. Over to you, Minnie. Yeah, I will request Tapsi to please unveil our book. Uh, so it all began in uh, a lit fest in the mountains where uh, I'd gone actually to promote my last book on uh, Isro Women Scientists. You played a role in, uh, in Mission Mangal and yeah, that, it was kind of an amalgamation of uh, many scientists that I spoke to. And then I met um, a two-star general, general, army general, and he said, uh, you know, there are lots of uh, similar inspiring stories among Veer Naris or the widows, army widows. So he started talking about them. And as he was talking, he got so em emotional. This is General Anil Chaudhary. There are tears in his eyes. So the contrast of an army two-star general, you know, suddenly being so emotional. So I said, tell me more about the story. And that's how I got to know and meet this lady who has uh, really transformed her life from what it was and, and made a proper future for herself. and. Um, uh, and for her daughter as well. So, um, the, the, the other inspiration that, uh, not inspiration really, but reason that I wrote this is, uh, we all see uh, visuals on TV and uh, photographs on front pages of very, very young uh, uh, widows, army widows, at the you know, funerals of their martyred husbands. And then you see them accepting the flags from their coffin. and, and you know, sometimes they are pregnant, like the protagonist in this book, Archana. Uh, sometimes they have really small children. And for that one minute when you see the visual and then you see it in a photograph, you are very moved and the next day is forgotten. But what happens to those people? You know, how, how does she, like 22 year old, Archana was 23. Uh, what happens to them and who support them? How do they rebuild their lives? So in this case, um, the uh, protagonist not only lost her husband at a very young age and also was pregnant at that time, but then went on to suffer a lot of patriarchy among her in-laws, harassment, all kinds of things. So I won't go into this. I want people to read the book. And uh, then she fought back. 
So in fact, the excerpt that I would request you to read now is the beginning of that seed of fighting back. And that, uh, you know, sort of led to transformation not only in her life, but there are two journeys that she goes through. So one is the external journey, that she uh, overcomes, uh, uh, overcomes all the challenges and, and actually manages to become an army officer, go to Chennai, train there for one year, get all the ragada, everything that, uh, you know, sort of uh, entails uh, uh, an army uh, training, training of an army officer. And then there is a second inner journey. Because all this time, she's been asked to, uh, uh, you know, be strong, be brave. So when I met the real uh, person also, she um, was so stoic. Matab, she was telling me the most horrific stories, which are written in the book. And she said it in a completely, you know, blank face. So I thought, what is behind this? No, what is the story? What is the inner story behind it? And that's the uh, that was also a key point for starting the book. And uh, so, the end of the book, there is not just the external journey, the army officer Bandai, and she could able to give her daughter everything as an army officer. But uh, she was able to get emotional freedom. She was able to feel things, able to cry. She was able to show emotion. So this two journey is like inner fate, fate and outer fate. So I would request you to uh, yes. read from page nine. Yeah. Uh, just before I start reading it, uh, when I met Minnie and Sonal, they came to me and told me about the story of uh, Archana, Major Archana. I realized that how most of our stories of bravery, valor, are actually finishing where the story is beginning. Because so many stories we hear about army personnel where, you know, how they get into it and how they fight for the country and how they sacrifice their lives and and then it's just a sad thing that the war just leaves tears and uh, probably relationships that are broken forever and that with that heavy heart we finish most of our stories of a lot of army personnel we celebrate today but this story began from there where everyone feels, okay, this is the end, this is the beginning. What happens beyond that? What happens uh, when that woman back home who was not really prepared of handling life beyond uh, after the husband left and had a child in her womb, probably the, the trickiest or the, uh, the catch-22 position, as we say, she was in in life. And from the time she was just left without, like, without any support to the time she realized that why do I need support? Why am I not supporting my own self? Absolutely. And then, you know, it's not about uh, gathering courage, honestly, for me. It is about realizing the strength you have within which you have forgotten to use for the longest time. And then realize that I can't do it without any mercy, help, support of any sort externally. First, I need to recognize the strength within and then everything else will follow. So that I think every woman or for that matter, every human being will resonate with because you have to stand up for yourself first and then expect other people to stand up and support you. So that is what uh, touched the chord with me um, and I've been like in touch with Sonal since then and uh, I'm glad that they considered me worthy of being a part of this beautiful launch uh, because yeah no, it, it, is, it is something where someone like me would feel okay I must have probably you know done something good for them to think of me for something such a beautiful and strong story like this so yeah, thank you so much for considering me. Thank you, Sona. Okay, now let's just read this. Rajpath, New Delhi. My hometown. It is a typical Delhi winter morning, biting cold, 
with no sun to provide even a smidgen of warmth. Instead, biting winds add their own chill, swirling around everyone at the Republic Day Parade at Rajpath. VIP guests sitting in the cordon of enclosures, as well as bystanders hunched inside their woolens, watch the three-hour pomp and show orchestrated by the armed forces. 26-year-old Archana Deswal, if you can pronounce it right, Archana Deswal is dressed in white, heavy shawls covering her slender frame yet providing no perceptible comfort as she rubs her hands together in a repetitive gesture. Her mother stills Archana's fingers, warming them in her own hands, squeezing for extra support. Archana is unconscious of both the cold and her mother's presence beside her. She sits in frozen stance till her name is called out and she is helped up by Colonel Sangram, the commanding officer of the unit. Together, they set off on the red carpeted path towards the President of India, Dr. APJ Kalam. He is pinning bravery medals onto valiant soldiers of the armed forces. He will be handing over Captain Lakshman Deswa's gallantry medal to his widow. The walk seems interminable. But finally, Colonel Sangram halts in front of the President, Archana, right behind him. He gently ushers her forward. But it's quite engaging, I might just go on. <laughs> Every soldier is important to the Olive Green family and we have the greatest respect for our martyrs. Captain Lakshman Deswal was martyred in Kashmir while saving the lives of his battalion. As a disembodied female voice gives a stark recitation of her husband's heroic act of bravery, Archana's face does not register any emotion. It is almost blank in its stoicism. She steps forward and accepts the Sena medal, is officially photographed while doing so and walks back with Colonel Sangram to where her parents are sitting in the martyr's family's enclosure. Oblivious to the rest of the ceremony, Archana stares into the distance, her mind visibly far away. The parade passes, by, passes her by, unseen and unheard. The various floats, the loud festivities, the dancing and abandon, the drums, music beat, music beat their own tune right in front of Archana, but she is unaware of her surroundings. A gentle nudge from her mother recalls her to the fact that Colonel Sangram is speaking to her in a low undertone. It is some minutes before what he is saying registers and she reacts violently in anger. You want to talk to me about this today of all days? How can you even ask me a question like that? She raises her voice, causing people in the row ahead to turn back in surprise. Just hear me out, Arjuna, pleads the 42-year-old commanding officer Lakshman's regiment. Officer of Lakshman's regiment. I have seen more of life than you have at such a young age. Despite your huge loss, you cannot live in the past. Do this for your child, if not for yourself. And dresses in the book. <laughs> and that's from, from that point onwards is the fight back. So I also wanted to ask you, Tapsi, uh, do you think such stories um, People identify with such stories because there is always a you know triumph, triumph of good over evil, Bolto, yeah, somebody's illa spirit is triumphing. What 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 is the uh, attraction of this kind of a story? The stories of underdogs are always exciting, inspiring. Uh, because yeah, I mean it, it's not inspiring enough to see a privileged position achieving anything, right? So it's, it's by default we are structured like that mentally that we celebrate underdogs more. 
But you know what is strange with all the women stories I found I find in common is I don't know how much I I don't know if it's right or wrong, but how all the women decide to do something first for someone else and then for themselves. Honestly, I'm not sure if I agree or I am okay with that fact because she as a female you're supposed to put everyone before you. So in this, like where we just ended, then if not for you, do it for your kid. And I'm, I'm like, she is also as much as of a living being as the kid. And she also has a life ahead. It's not over. But the motivation for her to do something was not herself, yes. but the kid. Yeah, absolutely. So, so it's just how we women are structured to always do some, uh, put everyone else ahead of us. So, you know, that story of sacrifice, I feel is also at par with the story of sacrifice of those who fight at the border. Yeah. Because you, there also, they forget about their lives and fight for the country. Here also, she's forgotten about herself. She's doing it for the kid, so the kid doesn't have a life, the kind of life that probably she might have right now after the loss. So that bravery is also equally, I think, should be acknowledged. Yeah. So you have done uh, many uh, roles of very feisty and strong and powerful kind of you know, characters. Uh, is that a conscious choice? <laughs> Actually, it's a snowball effect, I think. I, I, I signed a few in the beginning of my career because it seems like not many other actresses were comfortable taking those roles up. <laughs> I did not have an option. The, this, there was a void that at that point of doing, taking up such roles where you're not shadowed behind uh, big names, where you have to lead from the front or you have to take the risk of coming out and you know being there, headlining a subject or taking something up which is not considered to be a safe uh, subject. And making a big impact. Yeah, and you know the fact I chose something that was not really uh, an obvious choice started to, uh, people started taking up notice of that first. And then of course I had to make sure I make the best use of the opportunity and not let it go waste yes. by mediocre work. Yes. So I tried to give my best to make sure that that opportunity gets what it rightfully deserves yeah, from my side. So I think, and when that worked, it kind of snowballed into more and more such roles. And, uh, at, and the kind of scripts I get, I think I'll be the last one to crib or complain about the yes. variety and kind of women characters I get to play. I think every film of mine, I, I learn something new from the character I portray. I have not been this strong, uh, you know, this, this kind of an independent woman from the beginning of, of my life. I also have come from a very regular Indian middle class patriarchal household where, you know, there are different do's and don'ts of a girl versus a boy. Uh, I didn't have a brother at home, but you know, you can sense from yes. the uh, relatives and ev everyone the surrounding the neighborhood that your rooms and rooms are different from the men's. So, uh, for I was I was also not, I was not fabricated to think like this. It only, it was only through my films, slowly with every passing film, every character, I learned something new about feminism, equality, and how to be a better human being uh, for the society. See, like even in Thappar, for instance, it starts off as somebody, you know, who's doing yeah. everything for her husband and mother-in-law and yeah. everything. And then later on, you know, the audience starts identifying with the yeah. character right again and really rooting for her, you yeah. know, this is wrong and it shouldn't happen. And similarly in your... Uh, yeah, I remember in Thappar also, she, uh, Amrita does everything by choice. Nobody is forcing her to be the housewife. It was her choice to put everyone before herself. Be it the in-laws, be it the husband, be it everything else in the house before her own self. And again, it was only her choice to put herself first. When everyone else didn't want her to put herself first, probably she was the only one who wanted to now put herself first. Which was equally in her right like it was when she put everyone else first. Yeah. And uh, what about your later films also? There is a constant uh, running theme of women in power. 
Yeah. So, uh, so are those people expect you to do, uh, you know, women of substance kind of roles, or does it happen very? Uh, I think now they don't invitation. come to me only with uh, roles where they think it uh, might fall in the category of a woman that doesn't have a voice of her own. See, I don't have a problem with the screen space. I, I was a, a relatively, I had relatively less a screen space in Mission Mangal also, with so many um, women, so many actresses and actresses are there. But the point being that uh, you can't just take the character for granted in the film in terms of it shouldn't just make no difference to the script. That has on, the only criteria that I keep in mind. But when you, when you, you position a female character like any other pivotal character in the scheme of the story without saying, thinking just because it's a woman it will just have to be as the decorative item, then it becomes an important character in the story anyway. So, uh, hence they don't come to me now with, uh, I think, with, with little shallow or frivolous. Yeah, they don't, they don't. Uh, they, they, they don't even bother asking anymore. So these feisty, gutsy characters, is it a little bit connected with their personality also? As I said, I've evolved over years through my films. So uh, now, yes, uh, I think now I resonate more than ever with such characters. And I think if I continue doing this kind of work, it will just keep getting better and better, uh, clearer and clearer with every passing film. So yeah, I think I, I just think I'm a better human being after every film that I do. All right. All right. Uh, last question. Interest you where the inner journey is explored, not just a physical uh, journey, but emotional journey of you know somebody who who's very tightly wound, and then after a long period of time, and that there, there is uh, I mean a progression, and then then she's able to come to terms with who she is. So there's an inner inner joy, inner freedom. I think uh, most of the underdog stories of women are like that, and everyone can have a different start point and a different end point but they all start from somewhere where they are held back and they really don't know who they really are to recognizing and realizing their real self and then you know taking the flight that's that is a very very uh, common arc of all women underdog stories now the, the background can be different uh, the personal journey can you know be different how you reach from point A to B can be different stories, but at the heart of it, I think most of the women achievers have the similar story. So the Fateh is internal and external? It is, it is, it has to be. I think whatever is internal reflects outside. When you really feel that you have changed from inside, it will reflect on your personality outside. Thank you so Thank much you for so having me, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone wants to ask? Anyone, anyone would like to ask any questions to the author or to Tapsi? Let's find a director and a script writer and a producer to put it together and I think then it will follow after that. <laughs> Look up to you. You are such a great inspiration. You. you forgot the movie Badla and <laughs> Marzia. Let's not forget that. Two important movies. Which have Excuse also great impact you. on us, right? Thank you so much. You are uh, very good. The same, I mean, I mean, you get the vibe what we get from you is the same what we get on the screen. Oh, thank I you. I think so that much. makes a whole lot of difference, right? I mean, it is. That's what I was saying. Her yeah. personality, what you are, it kind of is what you show, the what you show. I think that makes a lot. Thank you. All the best, lots of more success thank to you. Thank lots you. Of thank you. Thank you so much. I'll get my special autograph. Oh, you have a thing. Yes. See. Hello, Minima. Uh, we are doctors from Nair Hospital. I'm really feeling lucky that we managed to come here on time. 
uh, one thing I want to tell you is the uniqueness about your movies is how you balance your feminine energy with all the bold and feisty roles you play. It's really inspiring and uh, now that I'm seeing you, I think it comes naturally to you, but it feels damn it hard. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm, I'm getting to hear compliment uh, from women and especially like, you know, some really achievers of, uh, I mean, you're a doctor, I am like, wow, okay, a doctor coming and telling me this is also a, a big compliment for me. And especially coming to Fateh was the reason that my dad is an army personnel. Uh, he fought in Kargil war as a frontline gun, gunman. And he was also the NSG of APJ Abdul Kalam when he was president. So this, uh, this story of Arjuna, Major Arjuna, I think it's relatable. Since, since she is a woman, it's more relatable to us. Uh, as we see from time to time, uh, in a close perspective, how women struggle. And uh, climbing the rank in army or any uh, defense, it's really difficult. Not easy. Especially for women. Yeah. It's yeah. really difficult. Absolutely. So, I've had conversation with the uh, army, male army officers, where they've said, oh, the training is very difficult, yeah. and the women can't do it, and they get more pelvic fractures. I yes. I was really doubling up. What is this kind of a reason? Uh, so no, what is this Honi Pata? Pehle se hi they've decided. So yeah, it's very tough. Yes, and even as you go down the rank, the struggle is even more because we don't see the backstage, what happens to the army personnel. And for a woman, I really feel it's a great book. I will show you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Hi, uh, Minnie happens to be, by the way, my friend from college. And uh, for those of you who don't know, she used to give me a billion ride on a scooter. She used to be wearing the helmet and I was clinging onto her from behind, very happy that I was alive by the time the ride was over. But this question is a rather uncomfortable question. And I'll tell you why, because both of you are very spirited, independent women. And uh, Tapsi, I think you've been doing some remarkable films. Congratulations. So this is a little bit of a provocative question. You may choose not to answer it because we live in highly troubled times and there are cameras on. But I do want to ask because you know your book is about obviously a fight back from a woman who's seen difficult times. How do you react to the reality of the fact that a woman who went through the most brutal rape possible in India and we are seeing in this great democracy of ours, even as we talk, a very privileged elite in this wonderful crossword bookstore, that her rapists, 11 of them, have been given a remission. They have been given the right to freedom. Uh, sweets were distributed. They, in fact, had no remorse. They were called, as some of them were Brahmins, and their sanskar was praised. This is also the India we live in. So my question is, so my question is simple. Are we somewhere deep down inside yet a hypocritical society where films and authors and a lot of us here will definitely do our best, but are we still very far from the horizons where we should be? And is this a political reality we need to live with where rapists are celebrated, a sista settled bird is in jail, and the rapists are killed? Yeah, Sandhya, I don't think that, that it's putting people in a spot <laughs> that question here. Uh, personally, as a journalist, I've signed all the petitions and my views on this are well known. Uh, but different people tell different stories, right? So um, there are people who will be telling that story also and they have been telling it for the last two decades. But this is a different story. This is a story that celebrates, celebrates somebody's, uh, uh, you know, struggle and then triumph and then final fatigue. Uh, so I don't think it would be fair to um, answer this. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. This brings to us
to an end to this beautiful book launch. The books are available at the counter and also at all leading stores. So please feel free to collect. Arun, Arun. Hello, Tapsi. Nice to meet you. फ्रंट बेंचर ड्यूरिंग माय स्कूल एंड कॉलेज डेज 
now the sad part is my life always revolved around books but text books so my transition from the uh, text books to scripts didn't see much of fictional non fictional books so now what happens is after i've gotten a hang of reading scripts is now when i start reading these kind of stories that inspire so otherwise my book reading has been because i'm an engineer my whole life was always about reading text books and that didn't really leave me any time and mind space to read other books and after that it's been scripts so now the good part is that most of the most of really good books around are being adapted in screen plays and and scripts so i get to like read them as scripts <laughs> so yeah thank you अब तो ऑडिबल्स भी आ गए हैं सो आई थिंक पीपल अब तो इच्छा होनी चाहिए पढ़ने की आपके पास अब बहुत तरीके हैं आप पढ़ने का टाइम है पढ़ लो सुनने का टाइम है सुन लो ट्रैफिक में फंसे रहते हो सारे सारे टाइम उस टाइम सुन लो सो आई थिंक अब तो बहुत ऑप्शन है जिसको पढ़ने का शौक है उसके लिए ठीक है थैंक यू थैंक यू फ्रॉम मी मतलब मेरी स्टोरी सुना जाओगे मैं लिखूं या किसकी स्टोरी लिखूं मेरी स्टोरी अरे अरे ऐसा कुछ नहीं किया लाइफ में अभी तक थैंक यू लॉन्ग ड्राइव व्हाट इज दिस यू ऑफ दैट